We've been running the Presenting Your Poster workshops for a couple of years now, and I wanted to put together a short recording explaining three of the main issues that come up most often. These issues are the lead-in to your research, getting the balance in different sections of the content, and the relationship between the poster and the presenter. So first of all, how are you going to start your poster presentation? Often students start by saying something like, good morning, my name is, and the title of my research is. Obviously this is fine, but it could perhaps be um, even stronger. When you've been working on an assignment for a long time and thought about it for many months, as you have done with the individual project, it's easy to jump straight into detail. But we need to remember um, the audience who has just walked in, who hasn't been researching the area, who might have just read one, two, ten other posters before coming to yours. They might not be interested in your topic and might not even have heard about it before. You need to start by explaining why the topic is important, what the real world importance of it is or why it's interesting and also to set the context by context I think of this like a Google map your research is in a lot of detail that's like when you're looking on a Google map and you can zoom right into a particular street see who is walking down it um, and the buildings but you could have no idea where in the world you are it's like that, if you launch straight into the details of your research, we could find out some fantastic um, details, some interesting things, but still lack the understanding of where this fits into the bigger picture. What you need to do in your opening is to take, take you, the person you're talking to from that bigger picture and then narrow it down to the specific of your research. So like you would in a map, a Google map, starting at the big world picture, then zooming it down, into that very fine um, point. You don't need to spend a long time doing this, but you need to help the, the other person to understand what the context and the need is so that they actually care and want to listen to what you're talking about. When we look at report introductions, we might talk about having this, um, this triangular shape where you're funneling down, you're starting off with the real world need or if you've got a very theoretical topic, the interest, the academic interest of the topic. Then the research context, so what is already known on the topic. Then the research gap. And then this naturally should lead to, so there's this need for something, there's a gap that isn't known, therefore this research is going to do something and um, to fill that gap and meet that need. It's like the piece of the jigsaw that, that people have been looking for and searching for. It will be like that in your um, poster presentation introduction, perhaps particularly emphasising the real world need um, and that gap coming through clearly. And obviously your, your hypotheses, your aims should be stated very, very clearly. Also the way in which you can do it because it's um, spoken presentation, supported by the poster, you could ask rhetorical questions. Have you ever um, have you heard about, you probably know, those sorts of things, or using um, an image on your poster to help make the point. The next thing to think about is getting the balance in the content. Um, sometimes what can happen is, particularly if you haven't had much chance to practice your poster presentation, people start off by giving their lead in and their explanation, and they can get too bogged down in a particular area and don't move on in, to be able to cover the other areas that they should in enough depth. So here you really need to think about what was your brief, what have you been asked to cover um, in your post and presentation and how long have you been given? What is the person coming to assess you? What are they expecting to hear about? When you've broken that down and you know how long you've got, that can again give you a rough idea of how much you'll have for each section. It might not be that you 
just divide it divide the time equally between each section some sections you might want to spend longer on than others but it gives you an idea and helps you not to miss any parts out it really is important then to practice the presentation and to see um, how the timings do work out for you and then once you've planned and practice then to, to repeat that planning and practicing process until you're confident that you have got and the timings and the balance right if you had been asked, for example, to give a five-minute um, presentation, it can also be as w it can also be a good idea to practice maybe a one-minute or a three-minute presentation, just so that you can be practicing your flexibility in explaining your project. As you've been working on it for a long time and you've written a report in it, you know a lot about the project and probably want to go into a lot of detail. It's key to try and work out what are the essential messages you want to get across and what are extra bits of information that you can expand those ideas with and how can you expand them to different degrees depending on who you're talking to and how much time you've got with them. The next area to think about is the relationship between the poster and the presenter. Um, the aim in a poster presentation is for the presenter to explain their research using the poster to support um, their explanations. The potential problems that you usually might see is when the poster is replacing the presenter. This happens um, when the presenter is largely reading from their poster presentation. I'm sure, I'm sure we've all done it when the presenter's there, but actually you've started just reading what's on the screen or what's on a poster rather than listening to the person. Um, you need to, the presenter needs to be adding extra value over what is on the poster. The other um, issue could be that the presenter completely ignores their poster and they are very absorbed in, in explaining and in presenting and they just don't use their poster at all. It's important to maybe think through how could your poster be a tool that you can use to explain things further, particularly maybe the images on it um, and the images, graphs, which ones would be useful to you to use and when, and make sure that you really know where, where to find information quickly, if there are certain statistics or figures or showing trends knowing where they are and thinking about how you might use them. And the last one, is obvi it obviously seems quite obvious, but it is one where we can make a mistake. Where are you going to stand in relation to your poster? One pitfall is that the presenter can end up talking to their poster rather than the, their audience, so turning their back so they can read off the picture. So it's worth in advance practicing in your room, um, either recording yourself um, if you can, and seeing how you can use the images whilst also maintaining a good um, body language with the audience. It's also worth when you get to the location where you're going to do your poster presentation to again spend a few moments just thinking where exactly you will stand. So you're not standing in front of your poster the, the room you can be quite tightly packed in in poster presentations so you will need to think where would you be best standing um, to attract people to want to come and look at your poster and also to not be blocking um, your poster. Here I've given the recommendation of the looking at the videos of the three minute thesis competition. This is where you have PhD students explaining their research um, in just three minutes to an audience of people of different um, different academic backgrounds. I suggest this because I think it is um, an area where you can look for some inspiration of how can you explain your technical knowledge to others in a short period of time. I suggest watching it and thinking about how does that, uh, how does that student lead into their research and engage their audience. 
how much time do they spend on each section and how do they get that balance between them speaking and using their visuals to support them but not replace them. So those are the key things really that I wanted to mention in this video, the importance of leading into your research, getting the balance between the different areas of content and practicing the timings on that, and also thinking about um, getting that relationship between the poster and the presenter right.